have you ever been in a situation where you're like, I feel like I'm not allowed to lose my temper like that. I feel like I'm not allowed to get emotional. I feel like if a guy gets emotional, he's like passionate and intense and he's good at his job. But if I get emotional, I'm like a crazy bitch. Yeah, but again, that I don't. I also think when a guy does it, that he's I, my. I am a big my. I came up with my father saying basically like, never let him see you sweat. My I never saw my dad get angry. He never got angry in an argument. He always was very soft spoken. My brother and I would know if my dad was mad. It was because we could barely hear him. Oof. I mean, that was what was scary to us. So, to me, somebody flying off the handle and being angry, man or woman, they just lost. They lost their shit, literally. <sighs> And, you know, I have opposing counsels that will, you know, say, make cutting remarks, say mean things. That doesn't help them. I see what judges are able to see, and I can tell that that's not helping. But people can't help themselves. And that's what you don't want in a representative or a lawyer. You want someone who's able to really, really hold your cards close to your chest, make the best argument that they can for you. We were talking a little bit before about the tattoo. That had less to do with, like, my boss feeling like a tattoo was, you know, female or racy. I mean, we literally, I would wear glasses mm -hmm. and I didn't need glasses, but I wanted to look older and I wanted lo to look more serious. Yeah. It's about, you know, and I had guys that I went to law school with that had nose rings or ponytails and the, the teacher said, look, you never know what your judge is going to be thinking. So you want to take yourself kind of out of the equation. Can you be fashionable? Can you look attractive? Yes. But you want it to be about the case that you're making for your client. Mm -hmm. And your client also by the same token. I have had to take clients we my, our office is in Century City over to the Westfield Mall buy them a suit because they're punk rockers and they're like have tattoos and a torn t-shirt and I'm like dude let's go I mean you know mm -hmm. you have to dress accordingly because the law is something where you are putting your best face forward yes whether you want to have custody of your kids pay less money people always say what do I wear well if you're going in and you're asking for spousal support because <laughs> you've been out of the workforce for so many years don't wear Valentino Huh. Blue suit, you know, tie on the collar. I mean, you don't have to wear a costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're wearing your flashiest with your Hermes Birkin. Yes. And wear a wedding dress. Right. <laughs> That's when you should wear. <gasps> when am I going to wear this coat. again? <laughs> or wrap yourself you know, in people like, and show up. <laughs> I just, people always say, like, what do I do with this wedding dress? Wear it to your divorce <laughs> trial. <laughs> That'd be great. Just dye it black. It has to be on an episode <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, you were just reminding me of something. Like, you know, we talk a lot on this podcast as someone that, talks a lot uh, and is, has a very adversarial relationship <laughs> with talking um, because it's like what I do for a living but when women do it too much it's annoying and like ugh, someone put a dick in her mouth it's like I, I feel like there's a I have a very um, a tight uh, a tight leash in terms of w when I'm she's powerful she's strong now she's annoying and crazy and obnoxious and right. a nag and right. shrill and whatever um, but it, it is such a helpful reminder, I think, at this time when women want to be like, and I'm going to fucking say what I think and I'm going to be outspoken or just in general, the sort of the younger people that I work with are like, I'm going to say my feelings all the time. And I want to tell them like, yes, being authentic. Great. Saying what you feel. Great. But the real power is shutting the fuck up, measuring twice, cutting once. And when you speak, saying something incisive. Uh, clear, cogent, and then people actually fucking listen when you talk. Yeah, and when you speak softly, people also often lean in to hear what you're saying instead of leaning back because you're yelling or being what could be perceived as offensive. Literally, the art of seduction 101. It's like we had Robert Greene on the podcast to talk about all that, um, which reminds me of I did used to date a guy that used that in a very manipulative way where um, when we would get in fights, and if I lost my temper, he would start talking quieter and quieter. He'd be like, why are you, why are you yelling? <laughs> No, like you, you're like, what are you? Why are you freaking out, babe? You're like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. So then I'm, I'm like, dead. what? Yeah. And then whatever you do sounds so loud. Right. It was like his way of making me crazier than I was. He's like, why are you yelling? I'm not yelling. Like it's just like now it seems like I'm yelling because you're whispering. <laughs> um, that is uh, I guess that one didn't work. Out. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I just th I just think that th that is something that I as someone that's been fascinated with you and has watched you for a long time and is am trying to figure out what being powerful looks like, what it sounds like, I got the wrong programming. Right. I thought it was like <clears throat> loud, aggressive, you have to talk the most, say the most in the meeting, be the loudest, and it's taken me so long to realize that it's not true power. 
it's it's a it's like a huge lesson. Yeah. That I feel like, you know, even with social media and posting, it's like more Less is not always more. Right. Sometimes. And, I mean, you know. And then what do you ever want to this is just like a totally geek law question. Do you want to go first? No. Not usually. How do you get the, who decides that? If you file the motion, then you are usually the one that's going first because you're the moving party. So you present first. Right. So I want this. And so I'm going to make my, you know, and then the other person says, well, I don't want to give you this. And so it's this. So, I mean, it depends. And most of the time, you know who's going to go first. But yeah. once in a while, somebody will like will position or whatever. I don't really care either way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it also depends on how long the trial is. If, you, if you're going to go first and then there's not going to be another hearing for a month, then that's not a, an advantage because you want to be the one that the judge remembers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're doing it all in one day, I mean, I don't care. 